This is a video guide of how to use Portal for Dallas County, Texas. The first part of Portal is Smart Search. We can click into that and begin searching with a record number, a name, or other information. We'll start with the case number today. We're going to start on the district court civil side of things. We'll type one of their case numbers in here. Click the CAPTCHA box and click Submit. That brings up our search results. We'll click into the case. And here we can view a variety of information. As you scroll down, you can see different types of information, ending with documents. Once we're in the document section, you can click view document to pull up the document in a separate viewer. Once we're done reviewing, we can close this, scroll back up to the top by scrolling or by clicking on any of the hot licks along the side. There are some items that you can click the drop downs on to hide or display more information. As we're scrolling through, disposition events also will have their documents attached and are again collapsible. Judgment amounts are also attached to their event and portal. Scrolling down, we'll see events and hearings. If a document is attached to an event, it will also be linked here. Service events will also include their service information, including service dates, anticipated server, and any comments that were entered in. As we continue to scroll down, we'll see hearing events. They'll have the hearing date and time, and a cancellation reason if canceled, or if the hearings are heard, it will show that result here. Continuing down, we get to the financial section. This section will show the different transactions that were on the case, and the totals related with each transaction and the total amount on the case. At the bottom, we're back to our document section, and you can always click back to top to return to the top of the case result. Clicking Smart Search will take us back to the search window. This time we'll search for a party. We'll use the same case we were looking at, just searching by party name. Make sure we'll click our CAPTCHA box and click Submit. Now searching by party name, we're going to get a lot more results than the one specific case. So we'll search through here for our case number. We know it was a 2022 case, and that case number is 08847. So we'll scroll down, and here it is. And it takes us right back to where we were when we searched by case number. Going back to Smart Search, we can hit the Advanced Filtering Options. This will allow us to filter by a certain court, Civil, Criminal, Family, Probate. We can also filter by the type of search we're going to do. So if we wanted to have an attorney's bar number, we could search for them that way. If we know it's a business name, we can search for it that way, and a variety of other things, including case cross-reference number or party name. Switching to party name, search type, changes the options at the top of the smart search. So you'll notice now we have a last name, first name, middle name field, and a suffix field. Before we just had one general smart search box. If we want to go back to that general smart search box, we'll scroll down and change our filter back to smart search. Now we're back to that single smart search box. The next option we're going to look at is the search hearings option. Notice here we have a bunch of options to look for court dates. We can search by certain locations, by certain hearing types. 
This could be if you wanted to see hearings on a certain case or a certain party, or we can search by courtroom, and here we can select our courtroom, and we'll select a date range. In this case, we'd like to see all the hearings in the 194th next week. We'll enter those parameters and hit submit. Depending on the size of the docket, this could take a long time to return. This one returned over 200 hearings and could have returned more, so our search was not precise enough, but it will give us the first 200 hearings for next week. If we'd like to go into any of these, we can click on them and it will take us to the case information page. Now, since we're on a felony case instead of a civil case, we have a few different options mainly the charge and bond settings and bonds section. If we click charge, it will take us down to that section of the page where we can see what the charge is. Right below that is the bond setting. We'll click the caret to expand the information and see a little more information. Further down, we'll see the bond information. Again, we'll click that caret to expand that out and show us more information. We can also downsize that caret if we need to, to condense the information. Continuing to scroll down, we have the events section and the financial section, very similar to the civil cases. We'll return back to our search results by scrolling to the top. and clicking search results. Notice the last page puts us on the 16th, which does not get us the whole way through our date range. So if we did want to see the rest of the cases for the 16th, we can return to our search and modify our parameters. In this case, we'll select just the 16th, and it will give us just those results. Notice we did not get that warning that we are over 200 cases this time. We can click into any of these just like the previous cases to get their detailed information. We'll grab this party name and do a search by that party name next. We'll click the upper left button to get back to the home screen. We're gonna search hearings again, but this time I'd like to search all locations for all hearings, but I'm gonna search by an attorney's name. So we copy that attorney name out of their last case. We'll copy and paste that in here. And we'll see everything that this attorney has scheduled for next week. Searching by attorney name, with all the other filters wide open, we can see that we have civil cases and felony cases set for hearing next week. We can also see the date and time for each one and the hearing type for each one. If there is a courtroom assigned at this time, it will also show in the courtroom column. Let's do another search on the county side. We'll do a misdemeanor search this time. We'll do a smart search by case number. Click that CAPTCHA box and hit submit. A single result returned, which is expected when searching by case number. We'll click into that and we can scroll through our information. Notice we have our charge and bond since we are on a criminal case. We can do that drop down to see more information about the bond. Here we have our events and hearings. Hearings have their times and they are also collapsible if you just need to see a list of events. We can do the same kind of search with the defendant's name. So we'll do a smart search and put our defendant's name in here.
will apply some filters below to only show the county criminal courts. And we'll hit submit after checking our CAPTCHA box. The first result uh, shows at the top is the oldest result. And if we scroll down and over a few pages, we'll see the results we are looking for. And there's our case right here. We'll click into it to get us right back where we were. Clicking search results returns us to the results screen. Where we can see all this defendant's cases. We'll click the Dallas County, Texas Court Portal button again to get back to the home screen. This concludes the demo of using Dallas County, Texas Courts Portal.